Okay, so in this episode, I'm going to be looking at this awesome book I recently got called Supercade, A Visual History of the Video Game Age from 1985 to 2001 by Van Burnham. All right, let's check it out. Okay, let's just position this so that you guys can see it. Yeah, that's good. Okay, this is a really nice, hefty book, by the way. It's really weighty, nice, nice page, very glossy. Which is very nice. You can hear that. Oh, love that. Okay, so what's really cool is this is really, it's kind of like a paying tribute and honoring the days of the arcades, which is awesome. Let's have a look. There we go. Oh, I love all the colors so far, it's really cool. Oh, look at the content. Love this artwork. Let's just position that a bit better. There we go. Wow, they really have all the games mapped out for all the various various years. This is going to be awesome. All right. Well, I can tell you now, I spent a lot of time in these places, these arcades. There used to be a thing called Trocadero in London. I spent a lot of my college days in there and my, actually my school years in there, playing games like Street Fighter 2, Space Invaders, Mercs, Strider, right up to like, Tekken, yeah, I spent a lot of time. All right, let's look at this. So you got a nice forward. Bit of, a, bit of writing about preserving gaming history, rightly so. All right, introdu oops, introduction. Oh, this is really cool. Uh, what I love about this book is that it's written from the voice of someone that is genuinely spent a lot of time in arcades, playing these games, and, and I, I, for one, relate to it massively. So this is one of the reasons why I love this book. Love this light photography here. Must be old arcades. Oh, no, this is from... No, this is Sam Flynn from the movie um, Tron, Tron Legacy. So basically, I think the point is they're just making a point that, you know, even, they, even that movie referenced the arcades as well, which is cool. All right, Pac-Man. Oh, this is a famous story about um, Atari burying all of those um, cartridges. I think they made a documentary about it as well. Yeah, I think like Atari made this game called E.T. Extraterrestrial, um, based on the the E.T.'s movie. And um, for some reason, I think there's a whole story about it. Which I'm not going to go into too much detail, but they they buried like in a bit massive landfill. <laughs> wow. All right. Oh, I, I do like what this does. It does is like it opens out. So you got all these like really cool pages that opens out like this, which is kind of cool. Wow. I mean, a lot of love has gone into making this book. Oh, you got another. Is there like another fold-out page here? I don't imagine that. Oh, wow! It does. It opens up like this. That's kind of cool. Wow. Oh, I love this. Okay. It's hard to believe a Japanese company says it intends to introduce a new video game machine in the United States despite the collapse of the video game industry here. 1985. Well, who's, look who's got the last laugh now. Today, the video games industry is a billion dollar industry. So, there you go. Alright, 1985. Oh, the NES days. I remember this. Look at this. I actually couldn't afford to get an NES. I remember my cousins had one. Um, this is an NES though. What, what is this? Oh, it's a rare AVS prototype. Part of a Nintendo brochure. Wow, okay, that's cool. Here we go. Here's some of the NES games. I have to say, I'm going to talk about this later, but like, there, there's something about the beauty of the pixel art they had back then. It's beautiful pixel art. Of course, Super Mario Brothers is the one game that pretty much set off Nintendo back in the 80s and still today doing the same thing and just getting better and better. All right, Amiga 1000. Literally just a PC, but look at that external floppy disk right there. It's pretty cool. 
Oh, the mouse. I remember this kind of computer at school. Although we didn't have a P Amiga, we had the Nimbus PC. Oh, the Atari ST. I had this computer. I remember this. I had the Atari ST 1024, I think it was. Uh, remember, um, we had Cubase on it and a game called Gods. I remember the game Gods. Yeah, I remember this. Bard's Tale by Electronic Arts. Oregon Trail. Lovely pixel work there. Ultima. Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? I don't heard this one. That's an interesting one. What kind of game is this? Carmen San Diego. A new menu driven graphical interface to query witnesses in investigation. Oh, wow. So it's like a detective game, but done by a text. That's very cool. Commando. I remember this. This is dope. That's very cool. I remember playing this in the arcades, actually, in Margate. Um, Empire Strike Back, Star Wars. Gauntlet, that's another one I remember. Oh my god, yes. That's very cool. Ghosts and Goblins, I remember getting this on the Super Nintendo. That's a very cool game. Again, like, just gorgeous craftsmanship in terms of the pixel art and the sprite animation. It's amazing. Gradius. Look out for a video, a video that I'm looking to launch probably in a month's time where I play Gradius on my PC engine. So definitely look out for that. But here, you know, it's mentioned here, Gradius. Beautiful artwork. Super hang on on Sega. I remember this. The interesting thing is, this isn't, even, this isn't even 3D. It's just Sprite giving you the illusion that you're, 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 you know, you're, on a, you're on a track and that you're going fast. But that's this very, very clever optical illusion with 2D and Sprites. Oh, wow. Indiana Jones and Temple of Doom. Wow, they really nailed it with the pixel here. I don't remember this game. But it seems like Atari were the ones that are doing all these kind of like movie to games um, adaptations. Oh, Paperboy. Classic. Classic. Yeah. Let me move this down a bit so you guys can see it. There we go. Space Harrier. Remember this? Sega. Yep. Time Gal. I don't know this one by Tato. Okay. All right, we're now into 1986. Ah, the Sega Master System. I remember this. Came with the light gun and everything. So cool. I do like this, but it really gives you a nice history of each console and the games and everything. But it's told from a gamer's point of view. Some really cool screenshots. Alex Kidding Miracle World. I remember playing this. There was a store in London called Rumbelows. I remember like just playing this because I, I couldn't afford to buy that when I was younger. And um, we we just go to Rumbelows. My, my dad would be buying like a washing machine or something. And I'd just be playing like, you know, the demos at the shop. And Alex Kid in Wonderland. Alex Kid in Miracle World was one of them, yeah. Black Cauldron. The Goonies. Another adaptation. Oh, it's by Konami this time, not Atari. Wow. Oh, yeah. Look, Lucasfilm Games. There we go. Labyrinth. Oh, that was the movie Labyrinth. Yeah, look. That's, that's the character. Wow. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, that's really cool. I remember the movie. Space Quest. Tetris. I mean, come on. Classic right there. Arkanoid was one that I remembered. Yeah, like you just move the little thing at the bottom around and it'll just bounce and just hit the various bricks and then they did so many clones of this game i remember in different and even mobile games later on like decades later created clones of this as well ikari warriors snk neo geo that was like that was like the premium console and again snk were mainly doing arcades so the big arcade boards then they released the neo geo console um, and again, like, you know, tune in for like in, like in a month or two months time from now where I'm going to release some videos with some Neo Geo games as well. Outrun. Now this was, this is a game. This I've been playing this in the arcade as well. This is very cool. Rampage. <laughs> Renegade. Yeah, that's cool. Renegade kind of remind me a bit like Streets of Rage, actually. I do remember this. This is a great book. Rolling Thunder. Wow. We're now in 1987. 
Castlevania. Oh, yeah. God, this is another franchise been going on for a very long time. And I like how they talk about the MIDI score with the music. It's nice that they mention about the music, not just about the graphics and the gameplay. Very cool. Legend of Zelda Classic. Yeah. This is another one that, that's still going. Metroid. Awesome game. Mega Man. I'll be, re I'll be doing actual playthroughs of these games on my consoles. Um, I, I actually have the Super Nintendo consoles. So um, definitely, you know, subscribe and tune in for that because I'm going to be doing a lot of that sort of um, sort of like playthroughs of these games, the original cartridges. None of this ROM crap, actual cartridges. Fantasy Star. Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of the Lounge Lizards. This is kind of like an adult oriented game, but I don't think I've played this. I think I heard of it. I never played it though. Maniac Mansion. God, there's one thing about it back in the game back in the day, these games, man, were so bold. Like any idea, just they just made it. I don't think there was like a committee or anything. They just made it and it was like tiny teams like programmers and pixel artists and that was it. Oh, I remember this from Terminator 2. Playing Afterburn. I remember like watching T2 and going, oh my god, that's Afterburn. I remember going to my nearest arcade to try and play Afterburn. It's very cool. Blasteroids by Atari Games. Kind of reminds me of Oh, that's going to say it kind of remind me of Contra, but this is Contra. Yeah, look at that. It's one of my favourite games. I'll be doing a coverage of that as well. Darius, proper shoot. And there was like this whole thing of shoot 'em ups. Proper shoot 'em up games with like side scrolling ones and also vertical ones as well. In the arcades, I just spent so much time playing, man. Just kept bashing those buttons. But there was a level of strategic and, and wit required to play those games. You've got to be very fast and be able to like anticipate like the projectiles. Collect the power-ups, man. Good times. I think I'm going to play this game at some point again. Double Dragon Classic. Oh, this opens up. Oh, that's, I love this. They actually give you, like, the whole level. I don't know if you can see it here. Yet. So the whole page comes out. That's very cool. A lot of love has gone into this boy. I can just tell. Oh, my God. It actually opens up like this. Okay, that's very cool. It's like the entire scrolling map. <laughs> that's awesome love it <laughs> Galaga 88 I'm going to shoot him up Heavy Barrel you can tell like got these like 80s vibe sort of thing that would be on a VHS cover of like a, a I don't know like an 80s action movie or something that's so cool you can tell that it, it, it's the time right the, the hairstyle and the art style very cool Operation Wolf, I remember this on the Commodore 64. I remember the cassette for this. Pac-Mania. Now, this is a game that I played so many times. In fact, I played it again last week. Like, R-Type is one of my favorite shoot 'em up games. I think it's because there's a sci-fi element to it. And again, for those who've been watching my previous videos, you can tell that I love science fiction. I even made two science fiction films. Um, you know, I'm just, I just love that kind of genre. And I think our type had a lot of aliens and weird sci-fi elements to it. I just loved it, but it was also a really cool shoot 'em up. So yeah, Road Blasters. Not heard that one. Shinobi Classic. What's this one? Super Dodgeball. Okay, so this is Shinobi here, and that's uh, Dodgeball. Thunderblade. Ooh, is that Snatcher? Stay tuned. I'm going to do a walkthrough of Snatcher on my PC Engine, guys. It will be Japanese text, but definitely subscribe to it. Look out for that video that I'm going to be releasing very soon on that. Okay. Gold box. Fright Night. Ooh, horror game. Very cool. God, some of these games I not even know. Oh, this is a classic. I'm not really a football fan, but I remember seeing this everywhere. John Madden. Snatcher, here we go, Hideo Kojima. This is like, this is like amazing, this game. Oh, it's a shame, I only, I only mentioned it once. Yeah, this is very cool. Altered Beast. 
Ooh. Assault. It's kind of like a tank game. Chase HQ. Yeah, look at that. Look at the ATs suits. They even got it in the pixel art nicely. Very cool. Knock. Oh, what's very cool? They've got the actual interviews with some of the uh, some of the game developers who made these games. This one from Eugene Jarvis. That's very cool. He created Defender and Robotron. Smash TV. Very cool. Robocop. Classic. Splatterhouse. Another classic. Vigilante. You really can tell the 80s vibe about these games. So cool. Oh, the Game Boy. Oh, this was definitely one I had. There we go. So I'll be also doing a lot of coverage on Game Boy games, people. So make sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm going to be covering a lot of Game Boy games. I'm going to be playing it on my Game Boy as well as my analog. I've got an analog um, handheld device which plays all the original cartridges. So I'll be playing those. And we'll be capturing those and walk through and all of that stuff. So definitely, definitely tune in for that. Something about this really cool green monochromatic art style with Game Boy games. I just love, love. So cool. Ah, uh, the Atari Lynx. Never actually had one personally, but I knew people that had one. I remember playing on them. Very cool. Very cool hardware. Very unique as well, the way they designed it. And this book really covers that well. The Genesis, also known as the Mega Drive in the UK. Very cool. Sonic the Hedgehog. Here's the PC Engine, better known as the Turbo Graphics 16. DuckTales. Oh, that's cool. Ninja Gaiden, another cool one. I always got that confused between Ninja, I always got confused between Ninja Gaiden and Shinobi. But um, I can see a ninja game is much more, um, it's very specific to its game mechanics compared to Shinobi. Indiana Jones, wow. <laughs> they got away with that, didn't they, back then? <laughs> with swastikas. <laughs> you couldn't do that today. I know, I think the last time they did that was, I saw that was in Wolfenstein. And then from, from then on, I don't think you can get away with that. But yeah, there we go. Met Warrior. Populous was really cool, I remember this. Uh, I spent a lot of time playing Prince of Persia at school on the, on the PC. That's a classic. Escape from the Planet of the Robot Monsters. Love this kind of stuff. So cool. Golden Axe. Such a good... I hear they're making a TV show of this, by the way. It's in production, so that's going to be pretty cool. Hard Driving. Golden T. Skull and Crossbones. Stun Runner. Super Off-Road, I remember this on the, I think I had this on the Super NES, I think. But yeah, I remember this, it's very cool. Hey, Hulk Hogan, WWF. All right, we're now in 1990. That's where the graphics got a bit better. <laughs> um, Neo Geo, so this is the hardware that's super, super expensive back in the day. It's literally having an arcade machine in your in your house, but massive. The cartridges were huge. And it was just specifically all about the arcade experience. Oh, I remember this, yeah. Mickey Mouse, Castle of Illusion. Super Mario 3. Oh, I love this. I like how this is folds out. Entire level design right there. In fact, this is quite inspirational. When we do our level designs in our games at Hazimation, we tend to do a lot of this kind of thing where we just... Well, I personally, I just draw it out on big isometric paper. Maybe I should do a video about that, how we design games at Hazimation. I think I will do that. Oh, anyone who's never played Solitaire's line, everyone plays Solitaire on their PCs. People at work, people at administration, they always have Solitaire on their PC. I remember going to like, I don't know, every like appointment to a doctor's, I see the receptionist playing Solitaire. <laughs> Classic. Secret Monkey Island. This was to me, one of my very first like engaging storytelling moments I had on a computer game was Secret Monkey Island. It was amazing. Felt like a Spielberg movie. Wing Commander. Love Wing Commander for the obvious reasons. Science fiction. Oh, another interview with an awesome developer called Richard Garriott. Very cool. Yeah, 
girls panic. Oh, this, this, okay. I remember this, Mad Dog McCree. This was the first FMV game I saw. It's, so FMV back then was called Full Motion Video. And this is like, so far you've seen everything has been pixel art, right? This was the first time they were able to bring video footage and create some some sort of like it's kind of like Bandersnatch that we had like a couple of years ago but this is like back like I don't know it's like 91 or something this was and you were able to choose your adventure but using the video footage they shot so they shot this western in several takes and different alternate like action and then yeah I remember this Mad Dog McGree oh my god we thought this is it this is going to change and revolutionize the way we see games it was interesting for sure I don't know how well it did though but it was really interesting Smash TV was awesome. I swear they should make a TV show on this. Hmm, that's an idea. Anyway, but I remember this was awesome. This had this very much like the Running Man kind of vibe, you know, the uh, the Schwarzenegger film. So yeah, I love this. Oh yeah, Street Fighter, the game. Ninety one. Here we go. Super Nintendo. Again, subscribe to my channel, guys, because you are going to get a lot of game coverage to do for Super Nintendo. I'm going to be showing my Super NES console. I've got the Famicom and Nintendo, Super Nintendo consoles. I'm going to be playing every single one of those games, talking about them while playing them. You get to see. I'm going to capture it all. So this is, this is kind of my way of preserving video games. Um, well, my favorite video games and things that inspire me to make games today. So anyway, Super NES was the big console for me. Super Mario World, amazing. Bible Adventures, Road, I remember Road Rash, had a really good soundtrack. Sonic the Hedgehog, of course. Toe Jam and Earl. I just love the really well designed characters and the story on this. Streets of Rage, really cool game. Now this is another example of a game that I played that I was just blown away by the story. This was one of the very first like of its kind I think it was because it was it was just so weird the art was very unique the pacing was not like a shoot 'em up or typical adventure game it was it's done by a French developer as well called Delphine Software and there was just something really it was just so unique I remember just being drawn by it so I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a playthrough of this game soon as well but this blew my mind when I saw this it's just the story was so French I guess uh, but again science fiction and it just blew my mind I love this Okay, this is interesting. What's this? Civil oh, Civilization. Okay. Lamatron. Oh, this is Lemons. Wow. Love, love Lemons. This is cool. Spent a lot of time playing Lemons. I'll be doing a playthrough of that as well. Dragon's Lair. This was a huge, big deal. This is one of the first, like, animated, like, typical animation, rotoscoped animated sequences. I remember there was an arcade cabinet for this. And you'll play the game, but it's very much adventure type game with lots of animated sequences, beautifully done as well. Fatal Fury, awesome. SNK beat him up. And of course you've got the Simpsons. This for me, this is the game that really got me just got me obsessed with video games to like to a whole nother level was Street Fighter 2. It just the music, the character, the story, the the mechanics, everything about it. It was Street Fighter to me isn't a game. It's a it was a cultural phenomenon in my opinion for people that grew up in during my time going to arcades. There was tournaments and it was the thing. And even when it came on a console, it was a major big deal. And it still is for me. Sunset Riders classic. Ten Minute Two Judgment Day. Yep, I'll do a playthrough of that as well. Time travel. I don't know this one. This is like a laser disc type game. Virtuality. Wow, this must be the first VR experience. Wow. 1992. Yep, Night Trap. Remember I talked about Mad Dog McGree earlier on? Well, this is another FMV game that came out called Night Trap. Um, you can tell now in the 90s vibe just by the, the video style and the clothing and just the subject matter. Um, I remember this because I remember seeing this on the Mega CD. And it was interesting. Again, you know, it's very similar to Bandersnatch. You decide what the outcome was going to be, and it played various alternate versions of what the outcome would be. Um, very cheesy, I remember, um, but still, you know, revolutionary. It uses it was utilizing the CD-ROM format massively. Learn the Dark, amazing. What's this one? The Dark Half. Don't know about this one. 
Ooh, June 2. Look at that. June 2. Sensible soccer. So yeah, for June 2, I'm actually directing the cinematics for the June Awakening game. So ooh, maybe I should play this for reference. <laughs> or maybe not. Um, but you can tell like, the Dune, the Dune IP has been around for a very long time. Uh, sensible soccer. Not much of a footballer, football um, fanatic or anything like that. But I did love playing sensible soccer, my brother. So that was awesome. Here you go, Wolfstein 3D. I remember playing this on the PC a lot at school. Um, Zul. I remember this as well. I didn't really play this one, but I do remember it though. It's like the alternative to Sonic or Mario. Oh, uh, fighting another Neo Geo game. I remember it got to the point in the arcades where like there were so many beat em up games. It was like Art of Fighting, World of Heroes, Street Fighter, um, Killer Instinct, and they were all like just the entire arcade places would be filled with fighting games. This is one of the first super hyper, hyper violent games that I played, which is Mortal Kombat. And it actually had live action textured characters um, with just hyper violent moments. Um, yeah, that was, <laughs> I was like, wow, this is where video games are going. I love it. <laughs> it's great. Again, it was one of its kind at the time. Um, it really set the tone for violent video games. Yeah. I think at one point they wanted to ban it as well. I know in the UK they were looking to do it. Total Carnage, love that. What's this? Virtual Racing, ah, this is like one of the first free, they were looking at the sort of like first polygonal 3D games and Virtual Virtua Racing was one of them. I think there was Virtual Fighter as well. X-Men, yeah, that's cool. Ooh, Doom, classic. 1993. The 3DO, so this was a console that I don't think many people had, but you would actually be able to play it if you went to the shops or something. Um, and it's one of the first games that really pushed for high quality FMV type games, um, video type games, but also had a bunch of other stuff as well. The Jaguar was very cool. It was a very short lived console, though, unfortunately, but there was a game called Alien vs. Predator on it, I remember. Um, and a company called Rebellion, which I decades later ended up going to work for. Um, I worked on cinematics called um, Evil Genius 2, but back in the day, they were one of the first to create games for Jaguar. So there you go. Cool spots. FIFA. Well, this is a franchise that just keeps on giving, right? So it's still going today. Kirby's Adventure. Star Fox. This, this is awesome. Again, pursued. It's kind of like the very first polygonal 3D games that first came out. And I was like, whoa, moving 3D, XYZ axis. Amazing. And it blew my mind when I'm playing this. And um, I'll probably do a playthrough of that as well. Seventh Guess. I don't know this one, but I did hear about it. It's a horror type game. Doom, of course, a nice interview with John Romero here. Just an FYI, I met John Romero early this year. Or was it last year? I think it was early this year at uh, the Nexus Games Conference in Dublin. One of the most nicest guys you could ever meet. So humble, super nice, and he's just like, he still loves and makes games. Such an inspirational guy. I'm so glad I got to meet him. and So glad he happens to be a really cool guy. So yes, John Romero. Interview of him about Doom. Missed. Very cool game. I remember playing this. This is one of my first sort of like epic type games I've played. Again, very, very big and grand in terms of scope. Ooh, Sim City. Now this is a unique game. Definitely a unique game. Developed by a guy called Will Wright. Yeah. Batsugan. This is like one of the most expensive retro games to get, by the way. I was in Japan recently trying to get this game and it's like ridiculously expensive. Don't know about Cypher Sled, but it's two player, which looks very cool. Lucky and Wild. Oh, I love this. This is a very cool idea for for like in terms of game design. It's a it looks like a light gun game maybe, but it's kind of like it's inspired by Tango and Cash, the the classic movie. Um, but this is very cool because it's a light gun game. And yet you can see the reaction of the characters as as they're driving. You can see the the, the mirror, but this is like a shoot 'em up while driving. This is very cool. I love that. It's inspiring actually for some games I want to build. NBA Jam. The Punisher, they actually made the Punisher game, which is cool. Ridge Racer was one of the first 3D racing games I played. It's one of the first games I got on my PlayStation 1. I remember this, and great soundtrack too. I think this set the precedence for things like Gran Turismo later. Samurai Shodan, amazing, amazing game. Um, that's very cool. 
Virtua Fighter, another one of the first polygonal 3D games to come out, I remember. This was in the arcade. It was weird because we were so used to playing Street Fighter in 2D games. And we saw this thing, we're like, what is this? And it was a very weird experience to play this for the first time, I remember, because it was so used to 2D fighting games. So, yeah. Donkey Kong Country, classic. Earthworm Jim. I'm going to move this a song here. Elder Scrolls. Oh, wow. Marathon. Bungie's breakout. Wait, what? Oh, wow. This was a, f this was a shoot em up on Macintosh? I had no idea. This was made by Bungie, the guys that did Halo. Well, there you go, guys. This is the cool thing about these kind of books. Like, you think you know video games, and then you read these books, and you see these games, you're like, I've never seen this before. So, yeah, this is why it's worth getting books like this, man. It really just brings you back and educates you a lot about the history of video games. System Shock is a classic. Warcraft, Blizzard, yep. What is this? Cops. <laughs> okay. Daytona USA spent a lot of time in the arcades playing this. Very cool game. I love this kind of stuff. Yeah, this is the other type of um, fighting game as well called Killer Instinct. Again, it's kind of got this 3D vibe about it. Puzzle Bubble. It's a lot of time playing this. Oh, yes. I'm going to also do a video playthrough of this as well. Another light gun game. Oh, God, I love light gun games. Because you know what? I might just go and get a light gun and attach it to my Super NES or something. Because I love light gun games. They're very cool. Although I'm not sure they're going to work on today's monitors. They'll probably just work on CRT TVs, actually. But let's see. I know if anyone's got any comments about light guns working on normal monitors, drop me a comment. Love to know. Here we go, 95. Virtual Boy. Again, I don't I don't remember anyone having this. But again, you, know, you go to a video game museum, play it, or I would see it in the shop. But it was a really short-lived one, this one, actually. This was the console. This was the game console that defined in terms of the knowing we're pushed to the next generation. Like, you know, we had we had like the Super NESs, we had Nintendos, the Genesis, Mega Drives, and so on. But the minute the PlayStation came out and we were using CDs, and that's when we were like, wow, okay, we're in the next generation of video games. And that really was a cultural moment, especially for me and anyway, for PlayStation. In fact, my very first job was at a company called Davis Studios, and the game we made was for the PlayStation 1. So that does hold a special memory for me too. Yeah, and also a lot of these events like E3 and ECTS. I remember that. That was a huge moment as well. Sega Saturn's another console that's very, very cool. Um, came out similar time to PlayStation. And um, this is Sega's foray into CD, CD-ROM gaming, of course. Chrono Trigger, awesome game. Earthbound. God, we're on that almost past the halfway mark of this book and we're still so much to, to look at. Wow. Rayman. <laughs> Wicked. Command and Conquer. Dark Forces. Lucas Arts. It's amazing how that Star Wars franchise is like one of the biggest things on Disney at the moment. But yet, going way back to the 80s, it was still the the, the IP that not just dominated you know, tele no film, not television, film, but also it went from film to gaming and now into TV and still making games as well. It's an amazing IP. Yeah, LucasArts, man. Wow, they really, they really were pushing, pushing the boundaries back then of gaming. Oh, this is cool. Oh, Gunblade, that's so cool. Area 51, another cool um, light gun game. I remember this. Time Crisis, fantastic. One little tip, one little firm fact, not tip. One little fact is that I almost, almost clocked Time Crisis with one credit in the arcades, almost. That's my my claim to arcade fame right there. But um, man, this game, so much time I spent playing, so good. There's something about gaming back then. It's like even though we had consoles. We still had to go to the arcades. We still, it was still a community-based thing because there wasn't like the internet back then or, or online gaming, right? So there wasn't like Fortnite or anything like that. So 
you know, it was like you bring your friends around, you all play. It was like an event. Well, I feel like we missed that today. Just one of the things this book's kind of like triggered in my mind, kind of evoked this emotion. Where I'm thinking, wow, I really missed those moments. Nintendo 64, I had that console, very cool console. Mario 64, for me it's GoldenEye. I wonder if they're going to cover GoldenEye. Let's have a look. Crash Bandicoot. Resident Evil, terrifying game. Oh my God, I remember playing this for the first time. PlayStation terrified me. Tomb Raider, awesome. Broken Sword, very, very cool game. Quake, very cool. Dead or Alive, I know, I know this game. I think I only played it once. That's another game. I'm going to do another, I'm going to do a video coverage of this, but Metal Slug, wow. Not only is fantastic sprite art, there's comedy in there as well. It just has everything. It's an amazing, amazing shoot em up game. And two player as well, which is awesome. Tokyo Wars. Wow. It's really weird when you blow up the pixel art. It still holds, but kind of doesn't for print, if you know what I mean. But it's still very cool. Oh, 97. Well, the Final Fantasy kicking in now. Look at that. I remember this. Final Fantasy 7 was was probably one of the first RPGs that I actually paid a lot of attention to with like, for like I don't know, five discs or something on the PS1. Um, and that was like a really big deal. Um, I'll probably do a capture of that as well, actually, a coverage of that. But that had some really emotional storylines in there. Here we go. I thought they, I thought they would cover this. It'd be weird if it didn't cover GoldenEye. This game was mind blowing. We could play up to four people. It was one of the best shoot 'em ups. Um, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, so cool. Like the mechanics behind this game was just phenomenal. In fact, you just kind of forget it was a James Bond IP. You just looked at it as GoldenEye. Yeah, so cool. It's one of the games that made everyone go and get, I, I think, in my opinion, the N64. It's very cool. Gran Turismo. Yeah, wicked. One of the first simulation racing games. Because, obviously, Ridge Racer was arcade. This is more simulation. Um, Oddworld. Very cool game. I love the art on that. Parappa. Parappa. The Rapper. Love it. Uh, I never actually played this, but... I remember seeing this like like on videos and stuff and um, in magazines. I was always always just blew me away when I just thought how simple the designs were, but yet there's something really cool about it, and I loved it. So I have to play this actually. Never really got to Age of Empires, but it does look good. Diablo, of course. Who doesn't know Diablo? Fallout, of course. You got this. You got the TV show now. House of the Dead, another light gun game. You know what? I feel like I should just go and design and develop a light gun game at Hazamation because I'm just getting this nostalgic feeling that I want to play a light gun game. And I feel like we don't have many light gun games these days. So, yeah. Ooh, could be a cool idea, actually. Do one. NFL Blitz. Don't know what that is. Pokemon Pikachu. 1998. Yep. Here we go. Pokemon. Game Boy Color. I think this is the game that pushed the sales of Game Boy Color to <laughs> to its heights. I mean, everyone was talking about Pokemon. People still do. Where do we get a solid? Oh, surprised I only have one page of this. This, this is like a really important game. So for you subscribers at, at the moment and the ones that haven't, you should subscribe because in about, I'd say about two weeks time from now when this video is released, I'm going to do um, a whole series about video games and Metal Gear Solid is one of the ones I'm going to be breaking down and covering. So definitely check that out and how Metal Gear has a big influence on a lot of the games we make at Hazemation, especially the new one called Max Beyond, um, the Fortnite game that we made, which is very much a homage to Metal Gear Solid. So definitely check it out. Baldur's Gate. Oh, wow. 1998. Wow. This recently won like one of the best games earlier this year, actually, Baldur's Gate. But obviously not this one, but like the one that came out recently or last year. Grim Vandango, LucasArts again. Half-Life. Yeah, I love this game. Again, very cool story here. Star Wars Rogue Squadron. Starcraft. Thief. I love the Tom Clancy stuff. Like, I just love all this SWAT stuff. This, again, this felt very simulation-based because obviously when you get shot, you're dead. Um, but it's not like a shoot 'em up where you can shoot, get shot so many times and pick up power ups. This is proper simulation for SWAT and based on the Tom Clancy novels, of course. This is very cool. I remember playing this. Ooh, here we go. Unreal Tournament. 
This is the game that pretty much set up the engine, which we now know today as Unreal Engine. So we have a lot to thank for for this game, especially for me and Hazimation, because our entire company is based on the tool set of Unreal Engine. We develop movies, series, video games, all in Unreal. So if it wasn't for this game, Unreal Tournament, we wouldn't have Unreal Engine today. So it's a very important game, Unreal Tournament. Guitar Freaks. God, I love these full frames. I feel like I might just get some of these and just get them printed and put them on my wall. It's so cool. Soul Calibur is a really cool. I had this on the Dreamcast. This was, again, a very cool social beat em up game. You get your friends around, get some drinks and pizza, and you just play. Um, and again, very, very fast frame rate. It was awesome. And again, all in 3D as well, which is cool. Neo Geo Pocket, I've got that, so I'll be doing some coverage about that. Just got to figure out a way of getting an HDMI <laughs> to capture this, but I'm sure there's a way of doing that. Um, well, never had the Wonder Swan, I heard about it. Dreamcast, as we mentioned earlier, this is a very good console that I've got. Um, love the games on there. Let's see if they have Crazy Taxi on here. Oh, yes. No, that's Driver. That's Driver. Medal of Honor. Shemu, that's one of the games on. That's another heavy story game. Again, that came with like four discs, I think. Um, and this is phenomenal storytelling. It was like a movie, but you know, in a game, it was amazing. Silent Hill, one of the most terrifying games I've ever played, ever. It freaked the hell out of me. No spoiler alert, but the ending's gonna freak you out. Um, maybe not today, but like when I played it at the time, we had never seen anything like Silent Hill. It freaked the hell out of us. Super Smash Brothers, Tony Hawk. Another, another developer interview here with uh, Masaya Matsura. He, yeah, that's very cool. Oh, he's the, oh, he did the rhythm game, Parappa the Rapper. Cool. I love this. This is, again, if you look at this, look at this, this art design right here. So simple. It just stays consistent with the line art. This is like, this is branding for gaming. This is very cool. And it's in the game as well. Like the whole art style. Yeah, we need more of this kind of stuff, man. Definitely. EverQuest, Homeworld. Love Homeworld. Big space exploration game. Crazy Taxi. I told you, I had to mention that. It's one of the best games I played on um, on the Dreamcast. Still do. It's really good. Ferrari F355 Challenge. Cool racing game. This is one, again, I remember this had this dynamic weather system. What? Well, sort of like a dynamic weather system. It's very cool, though. Dance Dance Revolution. Anyone in my age who not played that, that's a crime. I remember going to the arcade. This was one of the first where you get to use your entire body. This was like the time where gaming was good for fitness. <laughs> so this was a good one. Yeah. Dance Dance Revolution. It came with the mat and everything, I remember, for the PlayStation. What's this game? Oh, cool. Hydro Thunder. Boat racing game. Cool. Mr. Driller. San Francisco Rush 2049. It's a really cool racing game. Good race tracks. This could be a really good inspiration, this game, for things. Anyone that's building, like, Rocket League tracks uh, for Fortnite, this could be this could be a good one. Good reference to look at. 2000. Now we're in PlayStation 2. God, this, I feel like I'm going through the entire decade of video game history here. So, yeah, this is very cool. Jet Set Radio, Perfect Dark. Very cool. Space Channel 5. Yeah, very unique game, this. Not as unique as Samba de Amigo, which is very cool. Alice, looks like a horror game. Oh, it's the American McGee Alice. Yeah, this, yeah, this, this is very cool. I like this stuff, sort of stuff, very gothic horror. What's this one? Dai Katana by Eidos. Okay. Dezex, Cyberpunk at its finest. I remember seeing, this is before Cyberpunk came out. This Desert Dux X, as you want to pronounce it, this was where I first got introduced to the world of cyberpunk in a 3D game. Of course, we had a cyberpunk in a game on Super Nintendo called Shadow Run. Don't know if you guys remember Shadow Run, but that was my first cyberpunk game on Super NES 2D. But this is the first 3D type game, Dux X, in the cyberpunk genre. Hitman, very very cool game. The Sims, 18 Wheeler, interesting truck game truck driving game buck hut what's this buck huck hunter oh boy if this is involving shooting deers nope that's not for me police 911 wow they really had games for everything 
known in Japan as, I'm not going to pronounce it, just the police officer in English translation. It takes place in the mega city of Los Angeles. Wow, why have I not played this game? It's by Konami. This looks really cool. I have to hunt it down. 2001, GameCube. Another cool console. Xbox, another cool console. Fun fact, we're actually making the Xbox game, well, the console game, via Idea Xbox, independent developers program at Xbox. That's going to come out next year, um, 2025, mid-2025, hopefully. But um, who would have thought, eh, when I bought my Xbox back then, that today, you know, I'll be designing and directing games via Xbox. Um, I, Idea Xbox program, I actually have an Xbox dev kit. So, um, yeah, quite a special moment, actually, when you think about it. That's very cool. Oh, wait, is this by Dean Takashi? I wonder if this is the same journalist who writes for Venture Beat, the one who covered uh, my Fortnite game in Topia. I have to check that. If it is, it's very cool. Very cool guy, very cool journalist. Halo. I mean, who hasn't played Halo? Such a cool game. Great story. Conker's Bad Fur Day. <laughs> I've got to check this out. Devil May Cry, amazing. This is another game that really, for me, changed it as well. It wasn't, it wasn't specifically Grand Theft Auto 3, to be honest with you. It was the first Grand Theft Auto I had played um, on PC, then played on PS1, the, the top-down one, uh, which I'll, I'll do a coverage of that. That blew my mind, that whole sandbox urban gaming. And then Grand Theft Auto 3 took it to another level, obviously, with 3D, uh, where you just literally jack every car, do your own sandbox gaming, as well as follow your own missions. It was phenomenal, this game, and it still is doing great. But this, yeah, Grand Theft Auto 3 on, on PlayStation. Wow. Big, big moment in gaming. Ico is a very cool game. Another cool story. Very original as well. Here's another example of good original game development. Jack and Dexter. Very cool. Res is awesome. Like, it is like hypnotic, visual puzzle shoot 'em up candy it was amazing i remember this the soundtrack was freaking amazing too black and white oh i remember this yeah this is um peter molyneux is the designer for this oh there you go yeah peter molyneux had created the god game yeah definitely peter molyneux is one of like the legends of british gaming um in the industry still is actually majestic max Payne. i remember playing this like Bullet time, action, two-fisted gun shoots. It's like John Woo meets The Matrix. It was so good. I remember this. Red Faction. This is very cool. Serious Sam. Ooh. Oh, this is dope. I remember this game. This is a really cool shoot 'em up game. Again, it's really hard to get Iku Ikaruga. Like, it's very expensive. I went to Tokyo and I saw this. It was very expensive to buy. But this is such a good shoot 'em up. Like, I, just, I mean, it just takes it to another. You've got to be a really awesome player to play this sort of game like i mean i love my shooting watch you know i love our type but this was like mind-boggling to play i've got to play this though it just looks awesome monkey ball very very cool game again original simple cute addictive had it i've got this on my gamecube and i'll do a cover off i'll do a video coverage for this as well so definitely subscribe people you're going to be seeing all this stuff i like this artwork it's great this is from grand theft auto vice city and then we're back into arcades. So now the rest of the book talks about arcades. Oh, it's very good the way they've, they've got that coin up legacy, Cobra Arcade Bar. This is a very cool book. I mean, I'm flipping through this for this video, but obviously I'm gonna spend a lot of time just reading all of these articles. Just really makes you appreciate video games that we have today, but also the development time. Yeah, this is cool. There's also quite a few video game museums out there as well. It's worth checking out. I went to one in Germany. And there's quite a few museums popping up now just to preserve the the historic of video games, which which is good. Electric Town, yep. Yeah, this is is this Akihabara? Yeah, this is Akihabara. Yeah, I was there like three weeks ago. Amazing. I love this place. It's so cool. Oh, look at that. Look at that. It's a level, like nice little level strip there. But yeah, this this place. If you haven't been, go. It's amazing. It's one of a kind. Amazing place. Arcade Tokyo. More arcades, something about the neon lights here, man. You just, the minute you go into these arcades, amazing. Of course, Edge Magazine, a couple of resources. And I think that's it. That's a classic. Now, I've seen this on t-shirts and memes. All your base are belong to us. This is like, this is kind of like video game cultural meme, this. 
It's amazing. Art of fighting. Look at the backdrop for, for fighting games, man. Even the backdrop tells a story. It's amazing. And that is it, my friends. This is the book. So there's a couple of things in the back here. It just has some more imagery of Dragon's Lair. A couple of galleries. But that's really it. This is, so this book. Oh, it's a bit of a heavy one to, to shut. Let's just shut it like this. So yeah. Super Arcade, Visual History of the Video Game Age. Go out and get it. You can get it from any bookshop or Amazon. But definitely, if you're into video games, if you develop video games, you're a player, whatever, get it. It's a very good book to have in your living room. Thank you.